Hello Tubesters, it's Gav. Welcome to another one of my videos. Let me take these uh, readers off, or otherwise you just see green lights dancing on off the reflections. Where are you? Right. Uh, almost lost my train of thought again. It's not hard, is it, with Gav? <laughs> yes, we're looking at... Well, we're not looking at, we're building. That doesn't sound good. Uh, <laughs> I hope I've got all the bits that aren't stuck together, that are stuck together, off out of the box. Uh, 1 in 72, Eddard, uh, Profi Pack, FW190, and it's the A5, is it? A8 even, uh, Stroke R2. No, it's not from Star Wars. Uh, right, I'm doing the Green 3 version. Uh, there's no point showing you. Uh, I have done an unboxing. Roll the casters along, here we go. There. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm doing the... Uh, green 3 version uh, of, of the box art or you know the different versions in the box I should say I have to say um, I tried sticking together my T55 and it was an absolute waste of time I just can't can't get it to, to I can probably remove parts but I was trying to, you know, get things in position, and I just—it's just not working, uh, and it's just bringing me down. And I, with my head problems, I can't afford to be brought down. Not, not really low anyway. Um, Rob, I've tried to approach you on on Facebook. That's from Rob from Rims Models. Uh, I left you a, a, a personal message about it. Uh, it's up to you if you want to pick up on that. If not, I'll I'll contact some other people. Uh, and that's not being funny. I just mean I've left you a message. Um, and I, I was really flat, as you know. <laughs> my models are supposed to bring me up, and they do. But when they bring me down, they bring me down. <laughs> uh, I, I was just thinking. Well, I've got you know the huge two boxes of sprues because with a, a mini art full interior, it, you, you literally once you unbag them you never get the sprues back in so I usually use the packing box I use the packing box it came in as, a, as to separate you know half half the sprues and I was looking at them thinking well that's something I can't do then I looked at my FT17 I thought right let's see if we can resurrect that not a chance but skilled modelers can like Rob and other people out there I can't uh, whether it's now I haven't got the patience with it, which could be a lot to do with it. Uh, Charlie Mack had mentioned he doesn't like giving up on a kit. And I really didn't. I've kept this kit and I've kept it, kept it. And the same as the FT-17. And I just, there's no point. They're making, <laughs> to my wife, they're making my stash look bigger than it is because I just can't build it. And it's not for, it's not for, you know, um, just losing interest because, both tanks I like, you know, I've got an interest in them, I, I want to build them, uh, it's just not worked for me. I'm probably just not at the stage yet that I, for my own modelling journey, they're just too much for me. I have got a completely brand new, same T55 interior, exactly the same one, uh, and at some stage I'm promising myself next year I might have the skills to crack it open and have a go, uh, but not at the moment. Uh, so I was getting, I was pretty flat, you know. I'd had the, I'm looking up there at my T55 with its bit of a cover over it, but it, the the tracks just, I just, you end up losing interest, you know. Uh, I've got it more or less all the way there, but I've got to put a little dio for it now, and and it's just at the moment it's just not there for me. Um, I'm just sick and tired of, of stuffing tracks up. And yet it's weird, it's the mini art tracks about the only ones I've been able to build. Uh, and anyway, I uh, <laughs> for a little plane, this is a big ramble and half of it's not on the little plane. Uh, I, the, the sidebar on YouTube, that's all over, I'm at my desk all the time. You know I've got head problems, so I'm, I'm either painting clients' figures for war game, historical war games figures, painting, uh, other figures to sell, uh, you know, historically war games figures. All my, like I say, I'm painting a bust at the moment, my bust and display figures for myself, and my modelling. Uh, so anyway, whatever pops up on the, the YouTube, that's all I've got on all the time. You know, I listen to lectures and you name it. And another 
live chat modeling thing came up and I'm always a bit with the live chats with the modeling and I mean I used to do live chats myself as with the war games figure painting um, but I found like so, some of the live chats it, it ends up just as a joke fest and that, that's that can be fine but you like to hear the you know people talking about the models and all that and it just ends up sometimes just blokes taking them and girls taking the mickey out of each other all the time and it just it, it doesn't do anything for me i end up switching them off um, i mean i don't obviously it, it's it's good to be enjoying the hobby and 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 having a bit of banter with your fellow modelers figure painters too uh, but uh, if it's just joke, 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 joke all the time, it it, it, it doesn't really do a lot for me. Um, anyway, this live chat came up, and I recognised the one guy who's Spencer Pollard, who's well known in the modelling world, uh, and more people know these guys than I do. I, you know, I've been doing it again, not you know, returning modeller after thirty year break. But I didn't know Spencer Pollard. He's got his own YouTube channel when he puts stuff up. Um, he writes modelling books. He's, he's, he, he's, I think he's just stepped down from being the editor of one of the modeling. I don't get modelling magazines. It's either, for me, it's either, you know, modelling magazines. All magazines are expensive these days, and I prefer to put the, the money to the kits than, than buy magazines. Uh, but, you know, he's the editor of one of the magazines, and, that, and he does his own books on modelling, uh, aircraft modelling and stuff. And uh, I thought, oh, here we go. We're going to have another one of these. And the, and the other two guys uh, John and Drew uh, they're Jen on as well who's, I think she's a serving RAF member of the Royal Air Force who builds models uh, and it was just the first one I put on was one they did a couple of weeks ago and I think they put these on Wednesdays and Thursdays and it really was just great to listen to as I was painting along a bit of humour in there or a lot of humour but but just talking the, the models and that they're all in the the modelling world type of thing as in you know that they, they they've been entrenched in it for years and years so uh you know they, they they've got connections they know what they're talking about um and it was just really interesting to listen to and they go on for about a, an hour or whatever hour and a half and and that the type of videos as i've always said i like i like longer videos because it's nice to listen to as you as you're working away and they had ivan jensen taylor on the one i was seeing the other day and, and obviously he's a really decent modeler uh, so I've gone right the way back to the beginning uh, whether they'll keep these going it's all been through lockdown and that but I hope they do they've got a Facebook page I'm going to put a link I don't know about the link to the to the, uh, the Facebook page but I'll be able to do the link to the to the channel it's called the interesting so I want to read it to make sure that stuff up the interesting modeling uh, company but companies just CO so it's inter the interesting modeling and then it, for companies, CO, and then a dot. Uh, but I'll put a link to these on. Uh, and they're really, uh, really enjoyable uh, to watch. So, of course, anyway, <laughs> this is a Gav Ramble again, and it was never going to be. You know, all the way back to why I'm building my, my 1 in 72 Focker Wolf at last. As you guys know, I wanted to build this as a little, I said, you know, whether it just takes me a week, a few days, I just wanted a short uh, model. Um, that I could get done, not not rushing, but but something that wouldn't take me a massive amount of time. Well, of course, Greg came up with his T thirty four build, <laughs> so that robbed the space in the production line for the Focke Wolf, uh, and so with everything going on, I just thought, as in modelling wise, I just thought, you know what? I was listening to these guys; they were talking, about, and they do armour and that as well. Uh, but it, it was the, the, the obviously they do a lot of aircraft, and I love my aircraft. You always hear me say, I love my ships, I love my aircraft, I love my tanks. <laughs> but I do. I'm a military history buff. I like modern, you know, as in, as is now type of stuff. Uh, and I thought, I kept looking at because the box is down here right by me, just off to, to one side. Uh, won't fit in the stash. And uh, I just thought, damn it, I'm going to build my, my Focke Wolf 190. And uh, so I am, after all that. Uh, it's And I have to say, it's been really enjoyable. It's got, it's got the, because it's a profi pack from Eddard, they do uh, coloured photo etching there. Uh, first time I've ever used it. And you get your seat belts and the dash, dashboard. Is it a dashboard? 
instrument panel could be on an airplane <laughs> but you get all that you know uh, and I said to a couple of the guys uh, on the messenger I forgot how small after doing 135 scale uh, tanks for, for a long time and I, I tried to do the Sea Fury which went in the bin in the end uh, that was 148 uh, yes, I did do my start. The very first model I started off with again after that huge 30 odd year break was my Starfighter. But um, being a more modern, uh, well, obviously a modern jet, it's a lot bigger than this Fokker Wolf, uh, even though it's in 172. And uh, yeah, I was really, <laughs> when you start putting it together, you really, the Fokker Wolf isn't a big aircraft anyway, you know, and, you, it's, uh, and I've got, this, I've got the, the, the smaller snub nose version, if you want to call it, for, rather than the Dora, you know, with the big uh, Jumo engine. -y. Um, so liquid engine rather than this radial and uh, I, I, I started putting it together and I was just going oh please you know because when I tried the Starfighter the cockpit wouldn't get in properly and it was trying to shut the halves up and obviously fill them I haven't done no filling on this yet but you started putting the colour photo itch in and it really brought this tiny cockpit to life now don't get me wrong you can't see half of it <laughs> and although I'll have it hopefully open you still won't see a lot of it, but it's still, it's really been a little gem to build. Uh, there are a f few gaps, and I'm going to say they're mine more than the kits, because um, I'm just not used to doing this stuff, am I? So uh, there's a, you have to be, I do think you have to be a bit careful with, with aircraft, especially when you've got like multi-panels and that like this one's got, uh, not that you stick them on, but are obviously on the original aircraft, that sometimes there is a slight gap between particular panels for whatever reason. So I've been using my fantastic Fokker Wolf FW190 book from Haynes. Uh, it's a fantastic cracking book. Um, in fact, actually, you can see on the back there without me having to put the copyright up, but there you go. That's the type of thing that you'll see. And obviously you've got the drawings, photographs and stuff. They're brilliant books, these Haynes books are. And you, they can be expensive, you know, 25, 28 quid. But a lot of the places in the UK anyway sell them, you know, the Wordery and all them type of places. Uh, is it Wordery? I don't know, the, these these cheap bookshops. You can get, I mean, the Tank Museum was selling a lot of their, if they still are, was selling a lot of theirs off for like seven quid. You know, you can't go wrong. Um so I was using that as a, as a guide. We'll go down into to the bench. I know, I know, you just can't wait, can you? Uh, we'll go down to the bench in a minute and have a look uh, at the progress. Um, I can't believe I was taking photographs of this. I even put my little blue background to it. You know, I was like, right, I'm going to do a build thing on this. And uh, I just got too involved. I mean, I should have taken a picture before I shut the halves up of the cockpit because I tell you what, I really like that colour photo etch. I couldn't have done the same. Yes, I know we dry brush, you know, you can dry brush stuff over and all the rest of it, but, and there's cockpit decals, and they give you the option with this. You can have your, your, your hard plastic and then your decals, or you can have their photo etch. But I just think if you're going to do that, you might as well buy the weekend edition, which is about five, eight pounds cheaper. I think this cost me about 18 pounds. So I think 18 to 20 pounds for, uh, there we go. Little oh yes, I have been zooming it around the room. <laughs> you can't help yourself. Uh, Eighteen to twenty pounds, and I, I, I swear that was with free delivery on one of the eBay buys. Um, you, you might as well get the photo etch and the, the masks. You know, um, in my opinion, uh, because it really does those those, those coloured seat belts, and they haven't the. the I thought as I bent them, I gently bent them in. I didn't use any metal things. I just used, if I remember right, a toothpick. I super glued them in first, let it dry, and then just bent them, conformed them into shape a bit. It, nothing flaked off. It, none of the paint flaked off or anything. Uh, obviously, with this, um, with this cockpit, it, it is very enclosed, so you don't see hardly any of it afterwards. And I've got a piece of stick on the top yet, uh, but. I still loved it. It was brilliant. It was it's such a little morale booster. Um, yeah, thoroughly enjoyed it. Now that's not to say that it's not going to go wrong from now on. I mean, we've got paint to do on this year. The decals are going to be silvery, aren't they? This is me. But I thought this time, try and remember what some of the guys do because they give you multi 
multi obviously this is built for certain different uh, variants and that uh, and ones that they've produced for other kits they just leave them all on which can help you because you've got spares so what I'm hoping to do is put one of the cockpits on this one and use it as a mask so I can spray over just hold it in place with a bit of uh, crystal clear or, or PVA um, what else was I going to do uh, oh yeah the landing uh, landing gear obviously she's going to be sitting on the ground uh, so I'm going to put the you actually get two uh, landing gear covers <laughs> that's not where, oh, whatever but anyway <laughs> I'm, I'm going to tack them into place and hopefully use that, that as my mask because I'm terrible at masking and I end up getting overspray everywhere. So, right, should we go down to the bench and make this video even longer by having a look? But I'm really, really happy with this little build. You know, it's been brilliant. Uh, and they don't take any room up. And if it goes all right, I can keep them. Uh, I definitely do. If it goes all right, you know what I mean. I'm going to be chewing, bumping my gums within a next time you see another video of this. Saying, oh, it's silver decorating, oh, I've got spray, I over spray over everything and that, but uh, yeah, we'll see. I'm down at the bench. Right, guys, yes, much, much ado about nothing. Hey, a bit of Shakespeare. <laughs> right, uh, as if I've ever read any Shakespeare in my life. Let's just see, can we? Let's go into the cockpit. You can always tell the bit I'm most excited about isn't my own work, <laughs> but I really do think they look great. Those uh, seat belts—they they won't be. The, I did miss. You'll, you'll not notice it really. There's, you've got the sideways lap restraints. Let me. Uh, uh, I have to use one of these mucky sticks I've been using for glue. But where are we? I'm trying to find. Sorry, right, guys. I'm trying to find my way around a view, viewer. Uh, you've got the sideways lap restraints underneath these. And there should be some photo etch. It's like a little pale colour underneath those. And I totally left them off, which I'm annoyed the hell about. But you can't really see them. Uh, we can see our bits of coloured photo etch just about. Oh, there we go. Uh, underneath here. Let's just see. <laughs> you can hardly see it all, innit? I know people are saying, well, what was the point? Because... You're not really going to see anything, and you're probably right. You can just about see them there, and you won't see them. But there's even some little levers and pull levers and stuff uh, which I put on as well with some super glue, and they're all photo etch color, photo etch, and they're completely missing. Now there will be some more photo etch color, photo etch dials to go along on this one here. Uh, we just haven't got there yet. Uh, gap wise. We've got this here. Now I've had a look. Now there is a slightly more where is it there? A slightly more bigger gap on the real aircraft, but not that big, I don't think. Or especially trading off there. Like, that's me. I don't think that's anything to do with the kit. Um, this side I believe is a bit better. Yeah, I'm I'm tempted when I look at my photographs, I've got colour photographs as well. That that gap is quite noticeable on the aircraft itself so I may well leave that on I mean the wing route itself is is fine uh, where I have got a gap is here um, again that's probably going to be me might have even got a bit of overlap there we'll have to see but I'm going to have to fill that with some some filler this bottom again, I'm probably going to have to fill that and maybe just scribe it out because that's that's going to be being able to be un detached, obviously, on the real aircraft. So there would be a slight gap there from what I've seen. Obviously, it's fairly well; it's all sealed up there. So yeah, that that's where I've got to do some filling. Uh, the top here, I haven't started yet, but it doesn't look too bad, does it? You know, once I've sanded that down a bit, and then underneath. Again, that gap is natural, I think. Again, we've got to, got to just sand that and see what she looks like. The only thing that worried me was getting all sanding dust into this beautiful uh, cockpit. So I may well stick me canopy on before I do anything else. 
it's just so that it helps keep that dust down because I'd be it'd be sad if I if I you know got that all full of gunge. Uh, I'm not gonna. I might chip the metal. That's obviously a that would be an armour. I'd imagine seat. Uh, I might do some chipping on that, but it's such a because of the way it goes over. Uh, I don't know if you'll, how much you'll see, but we'll, we'll 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 cross that bridge when we come to it. The engine, all that fitted quite nicely. That is, I use this as a base coat. I've I've used. Oh, by the way, not that I've done primer the outside yet, but I use this. This I love this AK micro primer because you can use it on plastic and metal, and I use it on my figures as well, my War Games figures. Uh, I use their uh, black base for. Um, the black base is for your yeah, different aluminiums and metallics and I didn't uh, it's, I think it even said silver on the you haven't seen the struts but I've got the struts in the box uh, uh, but I used aluminium for that um, and I've got I've got about three different aluminiums because uh, I, I plan I keep buying when I buy something I'll try and buy an extra one of these because I'd love to do a, as I said to you guys before um, a, a metal finish aircraft jet the uh, the black grey was Vallejo. Yes, it's all been mixed up here. I mean, I used I used Vallejo's own uh, thinner uh, for this, and this is acrylic, obviously. It's just my normal modelling paint, uh, as in figure paint. And this I use. Let's get around a bit. Here we go. That would help, Gav. I use um, Mr. Colour Leveling thinner in that. And that works fine. You can. I have got a bit left of their own stuff, but I, I tend to think that Mr. Colour seems to work with most stuff. Uh, and this is obviously AK's lacquers uh, for the uh, late war German Luftwaffe. So I've got those to do at some stage. I just want to show you really what to, what they are. So. Yeah, thoroughly enjoying this little play aircraft. It's amazing isn't it? how you, how you can get a lift from something. Uh, I'll enjoy it a lot more when I know I've been able to work these seams because you know how bad I am with seams. But apart from, it's a shame. It's always it's always around the blooming cannons as well, so, which will make it hard to get to. But uh, yeah, really enjoying it. Lovely little aeroplane. I love the FW one ninety. You know, over the over the Messerschmitt, I, I much prefer the 190. So, guys, thanks for stopping by, and if you've managed to stick with it for that long, thank you very much. As I say, I I, I, I cannot stop waffling. It's just me. It's just how my personality. Uh, yeah, um, go and check out the interesting modelling company. As I say. Uh, when I said they call themselves the interesting modeling company, I don't actually think they're anything, although they're professionals a lot, not all of them are, but I know some of the professionals actually doing, working in model, the model world. Uh, I think that's just what they call themselves, but they've, they've got a lovely little uh, Facebook uh, page. Um, and as I say, the, these videos, are, uh, the, the live streams are actually quite good as a, as a, to listen to, as I say, they're not too, they're not too frat boy type of thing, you know what I mean? Uh, they're, 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 they're fun without being over the top, if that makes sense. There's still enough modelling related things and just general, you know, if they're talking about aeroplanes like, uh, I think Drew's, I, I, I like the Dassault um, aircraft, uh, you know, the, the Mirages, whatever, you know, I, I've got, I quite like those as well. and. As they're talking about a particular aircraft, say they'll be, they'll mention a you know, the real thing type type of thing, and it's just really interesting. But I say it's not just aircraft. They were showing the, uh, and this was for last year because I'm going back through their back catalogue. They were showing, uh, is it Border Models brought the the early Tiger variant out, and they were going through that and having a talk about it. So there's lots going on there. So you know. I'll leave, the, I'll leave the link to that. You might be interested. Guys, thank you very much uh, again. Uh, coming up videos, I'm not 100% not sure, to be honest with you. There could be more on the Focke Wolf. Uh, there'll definitely be one coming up maybe in the next two or three days with the bust. I'm steaming ahead with the jacket. Some bits I like, some I'm not 100% sure. But we'll catch up with that. Uh, it'll only be looking at the jacket, so it won't be... 
<laughs> I can't say there's going to be a a ton to show you, but we'll just I just wanted to go through the processes and 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 you know what, what how I'm approaching things on that. Uh, and I think that's about it. Uh, War games figures as usual. The Gauls, I'm still adding bits to them as I go. That they won't be probably up for show until towards the end of the week. Uh, when they're done, I want to get back on. I've got four Vietnam figures that have been sat there waiting, just to have the flesh done on them, and a couple of touch-ups and that. And so I've got oh, and a base as well. So I'll probably wait till I've got the bases done on those. But I've got four Vietnam figures, 28 mil to uh, show you, and I really really need to get that pickup truck just shown a video done and get it out of the way because it's 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 just sitting there like a vulture in the room watching me <laughs> so guys look after yourselves uh if you've if you're making you know if you if you're making videos you know if, uh, if you've got channels uh keep popping them up it's always interesting to see what people are doing uh, and what they're they've got to say what they're making what they're painting uh, and to all the tubesters in general thank you very very much for for your subscriptions for your kind words for the likes uh, and just generally making the world rock really we you know it just shows that you've in the darkest of times there's always for as well, we all know there's a bunch of Burks out there, but there's the the overwhelming majority of people are little diamonds and they shine right through. And uh, I've really appreciated your company over these uh, these these last year or so, particularly. So look after yourselves, and we'll catch each other very soon on another video.